Latin is a dead language that Latin teachers are encouraging students to actually speak. So why are they doing that? Why not just make students read and translate texts like people have been doing for millennia? Today we're going to talk about why. And so I have a very special guest, my friend, Isabel. She is a Latin teacher. Isabel's esteemed credentials include a bachelor's degree of classical languages and literature and a bachelor's degree in psychology. So she's thinking about how the brains work. <laughs> and she's currently getting her master's at UMass Amherst, which is the top <laughs> Latin teaching school in the entire country. <laughs> Say hi, Isabel. <laughs> Hey everyone! We're gonna walk around in the woods and she's gonna tell you why it sometimes makes sense to have students speak a language that nobody actually speaks. It's gonna be fun! Woo! So why are we speaking Latin in the classroom? Like what is the pedagogical and learning value of speaking Latin in the classroom? So students are only interacting with language, with the Latin language, for like 50 minutes, five days a week. That's not enough time to truly acquire the language. So every single second you stay in the target language by talking to them in Latin, there's that much more input and learning happening with every single step. So it's all about that repetition. You acquire a language by receiving input that is comprehensible, that you understand. And through that kind of subconscious processing, you start to understand and acquire the language. So they can read a text only so many times, once, twice, right? But by speaking the language, you can circle around it over and over again and develop new meaning and repeat that vocabulary in such a way that they are starting to acquire the language through repeated interactions with comprehensible input, right? So maybe they didn't understand it the first time when they read it, but by you speaking about it for a long time, then they understand it. So then what are the benefits of changing up the way that you're teaching Latin? So I love this conversation because it is literally what I think about 24 seven. Like I will come home from a long day of work and then I'll spend the next four hours thinking and writing in my journal, like how can we best teach the Latin language? Like it's literally all I think about all day long because it's so interesting to me. And I would say that the most traditional way to teach Latin is using grammar translation. And the concept of that is that you are learning about the language. So you're learning the grammar, you're learning the syntax, and then you're kind of using that morphology to understand a text. And grammar translation is really focused on how do you conjugate? What is a verb? What is the passive paraphrastic? You're learning all these grammatical syntactical terms to understand the language. And you're memorizing cases, you're memorizing conjugations, you're memorizing declensions. Um, and it's a very rote way of learning the language and very analytical way, kind of like decoding. But when I started speaking Latin, it improved my vocabulary so much. And I was able to understand grammar in a new way because I was forming it on my own and I was hearing it in new ways. And and then I could start applying the grammar and the vocabulary to context, right? So I have this like little phrase I like to say, which is minge puella, right? Which means go piss girl. And that helps students remember the imperative, right? Um, and I kind of like to liken this to playing soccer, right? So it's like, if your goal is to be a soccer player, you can't just only play soccer. You also need to go on runs to build up that stamina, to go to the gym and lift some weights to develop that leg muscle, right? So the value of spoken Latin is just that it's another way to interact with the language to achieve your goal. Are there people who don't think you should speak Latin to the, your students? Yes, so um, right now spoken Latin is really having its renaissance, if you will, um, probably since the renaissance, um, but basically, <laughs> like, um, I would say that like there are a lot more spoken Latinists now than there were 20 years ago, but I think it is still a little bit controversial, the idea of spoken Latin, because this really gets down to like, why are students learning Latin? And the truth of it is that everyone is learning it for a different reason and everyone is teaching it for a different reason. And so like the AP Latin test, right? They are expected to read high classical literature of Virgil's Aeneid and Ovid's Metamorphoses after four years of learning a language. They're, that's like asking a baby to learn, to read Shakespeare when they're five, right? Um, and so honestly, spoken Latin, if you only do spoken Latin, is not gonna get you that far because for those AP tests, they are gonna ask you what kind of subjunctive, right? So you need to be learning through grammar translation to achieve well on those tests. And it's also just like grammar translation is how all of us learned. I learned straight out of Wheelocks, which is a grammar translation textbook. And so asking teachers to speak the language is actually a really big ask. And it's very controversial because I think it becomes a moralizing debate. And it's it's asking a lot of legwork from the teacher to literally learn how to speak a language um, in order to teach their students that way. So are people out here like fighting about this stuff? Yeah, like there are a bunch of nerds fighting over whether or not we should speak Latin. Um, 
Facebook pages can get quite heated, conferences can get heated, um, and just personal interactions can get heated. The thing that happens most commonly is someone will like ask a question in the Facebook group that is very innocent, and then someone else will reply with a comment that attacks their entire pedagogical background <laughs> and technique. And then it becomes an 80 comment like battle between GT and spoken Latin. And what I implore everyone um, is that comprehensible input and grammar translation do not, while they are inherently at odds with each other, we, they do not have to be at odds in the classroom. You can marry the two, right? All we want is for the Latin language to continue to be taught and for more people to learn it. While I am a huge advocate for spoken Latin in the classroom, I do not believe that spoken Latin should replace grammar translation entirely. And that's kind of what, at least me personally as an active Latinist, is pushing for. I'm not pushing for the um, abandonment of grammar translation, I'm pushing for the inclusion of spoken Latin as a way to reach more students and help them acquire the language. Why does having students speak a language actually mean that you're going to get more students into the field? Okay, that's a great question. Um, and there's a lot of research going on about second language acquisition and learning styles. Um, but I think the key to this is that when you're teaching solely grammar translation, you're basically um, saying that your class is best suited for the students who are able to memorize these swaths of grammatical information. By having students speak a language or mainly by speaking it yourself, you're opening up your classroom to students who learn in different ways, who maybe audit like process things auditorily best. Um, and you're also, the most important thing about bringing the spoken language into a classroom is you're making it fun. You're providing student buy-in, right? So like maybe students aren't like inherently interested in learning the passive voice, but they are interested in playing football. And you can talk about like catching a ball, receiving a ball, or the ball being received. Like I think bringing in spoken Latin brings a lot of like modern connections and fun conversations your students can have in the classroom. And this is why it's such an inclusive way of teaching is that you're allowing students who maybe can't understand the grammar of what they're reading, but they can understand when you're pointing at something and you're saying the Latin vocabulary word, what the meaning it. So Isabel, do you speak Latin at all in your real life? Um, yes, but that's just because I'm a nerd. So like if I'm bored, I might just like when I'm taking my dogs on a walk, I'll be like, ooh, like ambulo cum canibus, right? But if you're saying like, is there any like practical utility in my daily life of speaking the language? No. Like, do I, do I speak Latin in my personal life? Yes, because I have friends who speak Latin, so we will just sometimes like banter with each other and it's really fun. The reason I speak Latin is because it's fun. And I think, like, are my students gonna become like professional classicists? Probably not. All I want them to get out of my classroom is that they can have fun learning something that they thought maybe wasn't useful. But my current spoken Latin experience is that basically um, in the grad program where I am, there's a lot of alumni in the local area who are Latin teachers who speak Latin. And so once a week, I will go to a local pub or Greek spot and we basically, the six of us, sometimes there's 10 of us, we just sit down and speak Latin for two hours and we really talk about anything. And so like when I first started going, I could barely say mihi nomen est, which is my name is. And then slowly, just like the more you do it, like I was at first just listening a lot and then slowly I could start doing more output. There's this um, silence period basically, which is the idea that before you start speaking a language, there's a long period of silence where you're just getting input before you do output. Um, and so that's my experience is once a week, I just go speak with local teachers about really anything. Like we will talk about movies. We will talk about what we did that weekend. Um, we'll talk about Latin. Like it's really fun. We basically just talk in Latin like we would in English. And it's great because like sometimes there's no right way to say something in Latin or really most of the time. And so a lot of the times we're just sitting there being like, how would you say that? Is that a genitive or an ablative? Like it's just really fun. So that's kind of my experience. So when you speak a language like Spanish or French in school, you're usually worried about making sure the accent of the student is good enough to be understood. Uh, is that something you worry about with Latin? So yes and no. Um, first of all, there are two different kind of camps of uh, Latin pronunciation. There's the ecclesiastical Latin, which is how the Catholic Church pronounced Latin and pronounces it. Then there's also classical Latin, which is how like the ancient Romans would have pronounced it. And yes, we do know how, like what the Latin accent was. Um, we have literature that tells us about like how different things were pronounced. So for examples, 
V's were W's um, and R's were usually rolled. Um, but it kind of depends on what kind of teacher you are, how much you care about it. Me personally, I just try to generally pronounce the vowels and consonants by the book, um, but I don't have a great accent, honestly. My, my Latin accent is not like phenomenal. I have friends who like, when they speak Latin, you're like, oh my God, that is Cicero giving an oration. Like it is beautiful. It almost sounds like Italian. Mine is kind of just like, okay, this American girl in her twenties is speaking Latin, you know? Um, I think it really depends on where, who you are and what you care about. Me personally, I'm like, Yes, we should try to emulate the correct pronunciation of each syllable, but I'm personally not too caught up in the pronunciation. And I think that kind of helps students as well who are nervous about speaking a language. And I also wanna include as a caveat in this video, like I am still working through my own pedagogy and I just finished my student teaching, like relatively new to the field. And I'm still kind of like testing the waters and figuring out my own ideal amalgamation of all of the techniques. Because that's what I'm thinking about on a 24 seven basis is how can I incorporate all of these techniques in my classroom to be the optimal way for me to teach and for my students to learn. The reason why it's beneficial to switch up the way that we traditionally teach Latin is that it's a shrink field Latin is a dead language right so how are we going to make Latin attractive and um, interesting to modern students and the way to do that is to switch up the way you're teaching and to make it accessible and interesting to all students and so there's nothing inherently wrong with doing grammar translation I think it does provide students with a lot of benefits and understandings of language and how it works however if we're thinking about keeping Latin alive and making sure that all students regardless of where they're from and and how they learn are able to be introduced to this language we need to be thinking up how we can switch up our pedagogy to be one more inclusive two more fun and then three are we teaching students about a language or are we helping them acquire a language the whole point of my classroom is i want students one to learn that they can have fun while they're learning two i want them to understand that latin is a vibrant language that has survived throughout the centuries. And I think that by bringing spoken Latin into the classroom, it vivifies the, this dead language that is normally just written on the page in this like, about this ancient culture that is so far removed from them, right? But when you speak the language, when you talk about a picture that's on the board and you like interact with them and bring their daily life into it, you give students the understanding that Latin was a language spoken by real people at a certain point, and now it's spoken by you and it's just really fun and i think that's the value of spoken latin is it's just a great way to make your classroom a vibrant learning space for all learners regardless of where they're from or how they learn best or what they're actually interested in well thank you so much isabel that was a great time if you liked this video check out some of my other videos there's lots of them about languages and language learning um, give me a like and if you want to see more subscribe have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye. Salvete omnes, mihi nomen est uh, Isabel Knudsen and um, linguam latinam doceo et disco and hodie um, de coloquendo linguae latinae volo colloqui.